we want to have a productive relationship with China. I mean, China is our largest trading partner. Um, and the relationship is, is complex. It's obviously a good question. We, we try to think about these things in terms of the relationship. One point that comes from the complexity is the importance of having dialogue, um, which is why you know, we're, we're pleased that we'll be meeting with uh, our Chinese counterpart later today. How fruitful do you think that dialogue here will be? Uh, look, I, I, well, the, the, it, that dialogue in a sense began or, or recommenced mm. this time last year after a period of almost three years where there was no ministerial contact between Australia and China at all. And we restarted that this time last year when I met my uh, counterpart, who was then the Minister for Defence, Minister Wei. And since then, uh, we've seen uh, a, a number of ministerial level uh, meetings across a range of areas. Uh, our Prime Minister and President Xi met in November of last year. But there's been outcomes to that. I mean, a lot of the trade that was not in place has been put back in place. Uh, from a security point of view, I think really importantly, uh, the, the formal defence dialogue, which is so important in terms of making sure that there are no misunderstandings, that there is a, a clear sense of what each of our country's strategic intent is, that has recommenced. And, and, and that's probably the most significant step that's been taken. And we are um, hopeful that you know, the meeting that we have today continues in that direction. Now, in saying all of that, um, obviously, we have a, a, a lot of anxieties about China. I mean, China um, is engaging in a very significant military build-up, really the biggest conventional military build-up that we've seen by any country since the end of the Second World War. And that isn't happening with uh, a sense of strategic reassurance being provided to its neighbours and to the world. And so, you know, that, that does form uh, part of our, our sense of anxiety in a security sense with China, um, but all the more reason to talk. But all the more challenging, isn't it? Uh, of given that both you and your strategic partners in the region and uh, in, in Europe have been making the case strongly to China to abide by an international rules based order, China is building out its and defining its own standards, its own partnerships and uh, alliance. You're building out AUKUS and the Quad. China has labelled it as a post. Cold War pact that creates instability potentially in the region. So, is there a third way? Well, I, th I think the environment is very complex, um, and in, in many ways, I think it is the most uh, complex strategic set of circumstances, and some way the most threatening strategic circumstances that we have seen in the world since the end of the Second World War. And I know it's a big thing to say, but that's that's how we see the world right now. And and so. You know, we, I mean, a few things flow from that. The global rules-based order is under uh, as much pressure now as it has been at any point since the end of the Second World War. We see that in Europe with the war in Ukraine, um, but we see it in some respects in this part of the world as well, which is why so much of our strategic intent and our strategic narrative is around the importance of maintaining the global rules-based order. And that, I mean, it's a, it's a, it is a fine sentiment, but it's also in our national interest. Uh, as a country of our size, we want a world in which international disputes are not going to be resolved by the rule of power and might. In, in that world, um, that, you know, Australia won't fare that well. We want to have a world in which uh, international issues are resolved by reference to rules, by reference to the international law. Um, and, and that's what has to be paramount, and that's what we but stand But it seems for. at the same time, Australia and its strategic partners seem to be inclined to answer force projection from a rising China with force projection through the Quad and AUKUS. Isn't that a dangerous path? And just spell out the intent here, Minister, if yeah. you can, and what's the next chapter well, well, I, I, in the I, evolution? I, so, so I, I very much understand the question, but there are some important differences. Mm. Uh, I, I mean, Australia having this capability will provide balance in the region. Mm. That is important, important in terms of deterrence. Um, but that is important in terms of providing pathways for peace. But the biggest issue and the biggest difference is there is complete strategic transparency in terms of Australia's actions. You know, why we are acquiring the capabilities that we are, such as nuclear-powered submarines, we are making clear to the region. And it is about making our contribution to the collective security of the region, making our contribution to the maintenance of the global rules-based order within the region. Now, w w when, when we announce the optimal pathway by which Australia would acquire a nuclear submarine capability um, between the Prime Minister, the Foreign Minister, myself, we, we, we made 60 international calls um, to make clear why we're doing it, 
of what our strategic intent is. So we are out there being really clear about what we're about so that there is strategic reassurance felt by our neighbours yes. and by the world. And, and I think that is a very big difference to what we're seeing in terms of the military build-up from China.